Hi guys, happy Monday. Um, hope you guys had a nice holiday weekend, whether you were celebrating Easter or Passover or just it being spring and lovely outside. We did have a little rain, but that was kind of nice. Um, taking out a little field trip outside. Look, we're field tripping virtually um, to my yard. Uh, we're this week talking about food chains and food webs. And so I'm gonna show you the trees and the grass and the other plants. Um, those are what we call producers. They take energy from the sun behind me and they produce energy in the form of carbohydrates, which we eat. Carbs are necessary in a diet. And so they are the bottom trophic level of the food chain. Producers are also called autotrophs because they automatically make their own food troph. And so I'm gonna go over here to um, Albert and he's gonna help us out because Albert eats seeds. He eats these. And seeds come from those plants we were just looking at. Hi Albert, can you say hi to everybody? Hello. And then, so Albert is what we call a primary consumer because all he consumes is producers. And so he is a plant eater. Um, he is what we call a heterotroph. A heterotroph is somebody that, or an organism that can't make its own energy, has to find its own food. Hetero meaning different, troph food. It eats different food, has to go to different places to find that. Okay, so now we're gonna go back inside to talk about the lesson to speak. Um, so as we go inside, you and I and the dogs, I was gonna show the dogs, but it looks like they ran out. Oh, there's one. There's Gringo. Hi, Gringo. You and I and the dogs are um, secondary consumers because we eat the organisms that eat the plants. Um, we are omnivores, so we do eat plants, and we eat salads, roots, and vegetables, but uh, we are what is called secondary consumers. We eat a mixture of producers and consumers. So I'm gonna introduce you to your lesson this week by showing you, before we get to that, your meme for the week. So um, in this photo, you see a watermelon, and the plant that the watermelon grew on in the watermelon itself, because it photosynthesizes, is a producer in the food chain of the food web. Um, a cat is a secondary consumer, but in this case, it's eating watermelon. And that bottom picture is probably what we look like because we're really bored and probably eating way too much. So I am going to exit out of there and show you your assignments for the week. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Um, grading is going to be different. I'll talk about that later. But one of your assignments is a Nearpod. <clears throat> and I'm going to go back to that. If you look at um, your Nearpod assignment this week, um, you're first of all going to put in your name. Make sure you do first and last. Um, as you go through the activities, I want you to make sure that perhaps you're taking good notes so you can do well on the quiz and your exit ticket. So this is a sample outline, just like we've done in the past with a picture. Uh, you're going to do a little matching with vocabulary. That shouldn't take you too long. Pictures and definitions. Uh, you're going to practice a little bit, and so you're going to watch uh, Food Webs and Energy Pyramids with the Amoeba Sisters. It's about six minutes long. And then there is kind of a cool practice site I found that PBS has a little Antarctic marine food web example. So you can, for example, read some more about food chains and food webs. So a food chain is kind of more linear, a food web is more complicated, and then you have all those guys there. Um, and then there is Let's go back to that one. Uh, a little bit about trophic tables and different animals and organisms and their role in there. And finally, a food web game. And I highly encourage you to maybe make your own food web after you do this, like maybe make a desert one. But you'll take organisms like a killer whale, um, who is an apex predator. You'll read about that. Decide where he goes in this particular food web, okay? All right, so I'm gonna hop out of Nearpod and go back to your classwork. So that is Nearpod. And the change this week is I'm not gonna put a grade in for that because the grade is gonna come on something you see next, all right? Uh, next up is your week three supplementary material. So here's some stuff to help you enhance your knowledge and practice. So there's another video called Energy Flow and Ecosystems from Bozeman Science. If autotroph and heterotroph are new terms for you, then that is here. But I also have some quizzes practices and the codes are here. So a couple of those, whoops, a couple of those quizzes practices, the codes are actually embedded. And again, this part is not graded, but here's what is. So you have um, a Google form in there that is your exit ticket. So some of these are short answers, like putting in your name, for example. And then some of these are uh, multiple choice and it will grade or show you the correct answers as you go. Okay, let's go back to classwork. All right, so those are your assignments for this week, and you are going to um, only submit, or I'm only going to grade an infinite campus, 
the exit ticket that I just showed you. So grading is going to happen a little different this week. You should be getting a letter from the district or perhaps Mr. Phillips that says a new category is going into Infinite Campus called formative. And so what that means is we're going to be putting in your grades, but it's not going to average in with your third quarter grade for a semester. So we're just going to be looking at overall, are we going to increase your semester grade because you're working your buns off um, by a letter grade, um, or is it going to stay the same? Okay. So when you take your look at your grades this week, you'll have two. You'll have the exit ticket that I just showed you, and you'll have your quiz. The exit ticket is going to be worth one, and the quiz is going to be worth however many questions is on there, like six or seven or however many that is. Um, but again, um, it will average, but it doesn't count to your semester grade um, like it has in the past. So you should be getting a letter about that. Anyway, uh, I miss you guys. Um, I'm toying with the idea of doing a Google Hangout. You might get a little email about that as well. But if you have any questions, as you have been, some of you have been great about emailing me and clarifying. Um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Miss you all. Be great to your folks. And have a great week. Bye.